Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're almost at the end of this review cycle and I'm going to have to catch up with a lot of mods. I have a long, long list of mods I need to do and a whole box full of materials that I want to try that either I haven't seen tried that often or I haven't seen tried at all. Um, cork, different types of foam. Um, Everything but clay. I'm not doing the clay. Uh, I just, I've worked with clay in the past. I know it's just not a good idea to have clay in your electronics because there's moisture in it. So, um, and I'm not going to do glue. Like the regular Elmer's glue fills. I mean, that, that's messy. So anyway, today we're going to be taking a look at a type of board that I don't often look at. I only own two, um, a Keychron and a Yusu low profile. But I do have several sets from this company, XVX. Uh, they're low profile keycap sets, which um, I, I really, really like. So um, I reached out to them and they were great. Uh, they were nice enough to say, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll send you out one of our low profile kits because I mentioned that I like their low profile caps. And I believe that this is a newer release from them. So they sent me out the XVX. L75 high performance mechanical keyboard. Now this is a, uh, uh, from what I understand, a 75%. Now they also did send me a set of low profile keycaps. So, and I've got to say this, I mean, I know boxes or whatever, but I mean, boxes take up a lot of space. Um, and the fact that this comes in a little felt baggy, it's, it's nice. Yes, there's a, there's a um, bag on the inside, but I mean, I could just, Take these caps out, dump them in here, and I have a nice grab bag of keycaps. Now, I'm not sure if this is, I thought maybe they, they don't come with keycaps. I'm not sure, or if they just sent me these to try on a different keyboard, but I, I do like these. They look to be similar to the uh, dark hammerhead uh, colorway, I think that's the name of it. I, I lose track of a lot of these. <laughs> Um, names it's uh, just there's so many of them so all right this is uh, for <laughs> I'm gonna make a necklace out of these one day just have a whole bunch of these I am key master <laughs> I'm just kidding it was my attempt at humor so anyway let's take a look at what we got here I don't know if these are separate but we're gonna check this out um, all right oh no, this does have keycaps, so looks like it has a couple of different, uh, oh, these are shine through. Okay, I think, I think I see the difference. These appear to be shine through, while those are completely, um, double shot, uh, without shine through. They're opaque. So, let's go ahead and see what we've got in here. All right, set this aside for a second. What does the box have? This is my first XVX keyboard. I have plenty of XVX keycap sets. Um, no plenty, probably like four. All right, so we got your key switch keycap puller, the square one with the, I do like the hole right there because it does allow you leverage. Some of these just a complete block. We have your USB-A to USB-C cable, and we have your 2.4 gigahertz dongle. All right, so it's a basic uh, rubberized cable. We're going to go ahead and leave the dongle in there so it doesn't get lost. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. They're Windows. They've got... So they come loaded with the Mac keys. And here we have um, a Win key, an Alt key, and a single Alt key for over here. All right, before I put the space bar back on, um, now we're looking at a top aluminum frame that does have a Windows and a Mac switch. So for all you folks that... Uh, I, I recommend if you were going to be primarily using on a Mac keyboard, especially if you're a newcomer to the hobby, that you find one with the hardware switch so you don't have to remember a key combination. Um, oh, and we have, wow, a clear bottom so we can actually see the PCB in there. That's very nice. Huh. And we're using what appears to be Wait a minute, are these those different ones? 
I'm not sure if this is hot swap or not, but it's using G, Y, and X switches, reds, and they're low profile switches. But now, oh no, they are hot swap. I can see the hot swap socket in the back. I know these can be a bit of a pain to take out. Let's see if this will help. Had good luck with this switch puller. Oh, this is the switch puller side. Well, let me see if I can take that one out. These, uh, I have these switches on my Otemu um, low profile, or at least they're similar. They're not, they're Otemu's uh, actual switches, but, but these, have, they don't seem to have a clip on the top and the bottom. I'm trying to remember how I pulled them out of the other one. So, so I don't end up breaking this. Let me check out stabilizers. I mean, obviously I'm gonna have to take them out at some point, but I will, uh, sometimes I even have to look up things and how to do them right. So looking at the stabilizers, we have the most minimal amount of um, lubrication. It's almost not there. And I can already tell, tell from the, I mean, they're rattling. They're literally, So that stuff, oh, one side's rattly, one's not. So why is the tolerance is different on both sides? Seems kind of odd, but that automatically tells me that I'm probably gonna have a little bit of ticking. Yeah, I can hear it. So these are definitely gonna be, need tuning. Yeah, I mean, it's very, it's a very light difference, but the RGB is definitely a little bit lower when it's running on the battery. Now, I don't know if you noticed that though, I was in plugged in mode, but it takes a second for it to boot. Yeah, those are definitely just the slightest bit brighter, but I can see. So if I put it on, will it now do, what I'm trying to see is can I do, if I can uh, charge while on wireless mode? But, all right, so if I do this, yeah, the light, the light's just dim, just the slightest. Toggle the switch to on for wireless, we are. Function R for three to six seconds. It prompts the light flashing. That's 2.4. So, for Bluetooth, toggle the switch to on, press function plus R for three to six seconds, then prompt light flashing. R. It's saying R for both Bluetooth and 2.4. What light's supposed to be flashing? I don't see any prop light flashing. So let me go off and back on because it, maybe it just gets stuck in wired mode and you can't do anything wireless. I don't know. Function Q will be the first Bluetooth slot. Oh, now we have a blinking, although the light, I don't know if you can tell, so you can't see it there, but if I put it at a bit of an angle, then you can see it. The LED is not lined up with the hole. All right, so I, maybe it was before and I wasn't seeing it. So let me see if I can see it. Ah, it just showed up. And there, it's listed as two devices, the XLV, XVX L75 III, XVX L75 V. Does that mean Bluetooth 3 and Bluetooth 5? I don't know. Let me connect. All right, so now it's connected. Wow, it's a little bit of lag. Definitely the lag can be noticeable here as um, it's taken like a, maybe 500, 300 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, I don't know. Some, yeah, it's just kind of delayed. So, all right, well, I still don't know why it shows up as two different devices, but so we are connected. Um, but I, I, I gotta say, I'm, I can't get past just, I mean, on initial impressions, uh, you got different switches in here. How do you take them out? Um, you know, perhaps provide a little bit of instruction. 
um, the LED not being lined up. I mean, I can't see it head on. I mean, if you're looking at it head on, see, we're looking at it top down. Do you see a light on? No. What happens when I turn it a little bit? See? At an angle, you can see that there's a light right there. But straight up, up, and down. So, I mean, what good is an indicator light if I can't see it from the vantage point that I'm going to be using to use the keyboard? Two, or three, I should say. Why no feet? Yeah, we have a plastic bottom, and you could have kept it clear, but you could have put a cavity in there to include at least one pair of feet. Because, I mean, right now we're dealing with a typing angle of only... Oh, it actually does have a bit of an angle on it. I'm surprised. It's four degrees. But, I mean, the minimal for me has got to be five or six, and I prefer seven. So, four degrees typing angle. I mean, what, what advantage do I have over this? This over a laptop keyboard. I mean, see, this is what I currently use as my video workstation. But, I have feet. Now, I know it's not low profile, and it's only, you know, one set of feet, but... Thankfully, it has, I mean, it's got a five degree typing angle just from sitting flat. So, plus I'm not going to be typing on it that much it's sitting on top of my laptop, laptop. And that's why I like this particular form factor because it, most of the times, most of the, key, the laptops I have, this will fit directly over the keyboard. But it's not buying me much. I mean, not that laptop keyboards, although I, I do have one, it's a ThinkPad, and I think it has like a two or three degree inclination, like it's almost invisible until you actually put a tool on there to measure it, like, oh, it's actually at an angle. But, so this is buying you at most one degree, but I'm still gonna be typing like this. And even if I was typing like this, I my wrists are going to hurt at the end of the day. That's not productive in my, in my opinion. So how, or why they did not put extra feet on here. Because I mean, I literally could just glue some rubber feet on here and buy me at least a couple of degrees to where I could use it. But like this, it's just, it's just not ideal in my opinion. All right, so I went and pulled out uh, my Yusu low profile and I believe this uses very similar switches. But I mean, here I can just grab onto the top and bottom as I do most switches. I know these are called half height, half height switches. Sorry about that. So despite these being Otemu, they do have still the tab at the top and the bottom, like I'm used to for removing switches. So when looking at these, Inadvertently. These do not have tabs at the top or the bottom. And I mean, all right, let's in, let's see if they have something special about their key switch puller. But all right, the ends are just curled. But where am I supposed to grab onto? I got a little purchase there. All right, so these are the different, or the chalk style, I wanna call them, hot swap sockets. So these are not gonna be the same as these. So please beware that these are, I believe they're called chalk, chalk style. So, wow, as you can see, the socket's actually below where the cutout is, so I think the tolerances weren't uh, necessarily configured properly here because that is just, I don't know. All right, they went in. The legends on these are almost impossible to read without light shining through. Um, 
as compared to, I mean, this Yushu was $12. That's half, well, I mean, half height profile, but at least, hey, it has feet. Um, but it's not, I mean, well, it's a steel plate, not aluminum. But as you can see, I can read the legend, or I'm sure you could read the legend on that as well. So compared to the legend on here, I don't even know if I got it upside down or not. So, I mean, yeah, I might want to use this in the dark, but if I'm using this during the day and I don't want to have the lights on, I mean, I mean, I, I, I touch type, but still, this is a different layout. I probably going to be looking at it for the first couple of days of usage or if I haven't used it in a while. So not having the legends on there. It's not that I don't know what key that is, but it's going to make my brain go, whoa, hold on. Wait, is that the right key? So, um, I can't say I, I necessarily agree with that. Now, in this situation, since, I mean, these key caps or this, these key switches are so, uh, they're hard to remove. Let me just say, I'm just, I don't understand. I mean, all I'm doing right now is scratching up the plate because there's literally no where to grab purchase unless I like shove it in there and I have to pull up one side first, then the other side. All right, yeah, this is So, I mean, trying to get one switch off. Look at how much paint I scraped off this pretty plate. I mean, that's just, that's just silly. And I mean, I don't, I just don't think most users are going to, are going to use the keyboard when it sounds this way because it is just too rattly. Oh. And of course they don't want to come out. Oh, wow. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can see that, but right here, when I pulled that switch out, it literally bent the metal up. I mean, I thought this was aluminum, but no, yeah, no, it's aluminum. So it's just some cheap aluminum because that's just, Ridiculous. That's why I can't pull the uh, stabilizers out now because this is literally squeezing into it. I can literally bend the, the aluminum plate with a plastic spider. Um, I just, I don't know what to say, honestly. That's why the, it didn't want to come out. Why did I damage it on this side too? So again, we're looking at uh, these milky, uh, I, in my experience, these milky ones are about the cheapest stabilizers that they can get. So, oh, I was wrong. There is absolutely no lubrication on here. Not one iota and, oh, they have backs on them. So I know that they're low profile, but still, what are you doing? Um, so look at how much play that has. Now, yeah, because, I mean, you guys can see how that literally, pulling out the switch, literally lifted the, um, the plate, the side of that, and I can just bend it with hardly any force. Um, I hate that I feel that I have to say this, but uh, manufacturers, if you're going to put metal where there's going to be pieces that are moved and removed you gotta strengthen it i mean i know there's different aluminum alloys but this is probably about the lightest one i mean this this keyboard is ultra light despite it having aluminum i mean it weighs all of 525 grams with switches and keycaps um now i know it's a low profile but that's just a it does seem to be i don't know if that's PCB or something else. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if there's actually any padding between the plate and the PCB. But I don't think that there is. I am not having fun removing these key switches, so I'm not going to continue doing it because I'm just destroying the keyboard. This is just... I don't know. I'm... Based on their keycaps, I was honestly expecting a better quality keyboard. I was hoping that this was going to be a, um, a new low profile for me. But, I mean, this keyboard honestly makes me want to start <laughs> getting upset. But I'm not going to let that happen. I, um... I'm just trying to understand. Now, I appreciate that they sent me an extra keycap set because, yes, this is going to look a lot better because I can actually see it. And, I mean, granted, there's not that much space between the keys, but the LEDs aren't that bright. So, I did actually... Maybe I'll, I'll do one stock and then take the effort to... I mean, because it's going to take me a while to just to get the key switches in and out. Tuning them is not a problem. It's removing them and scratching the heck out of this aluminum plate or actually bending it out of shape to where I can't bend it back. I mean, I shouldn't be scared. I mean, obviously I need to be careful if I'm modifying a keyboard. We're dealing with electronics and sometimes there's, you know, some components that are a little bit more fragile than others. But I should be able to take out the switches and tune the stabilizers when I got a hot swap keyboard because what else is the point to having hot swap if I can't just take out the switches and you know, I don't have to unsolder it so that I can you know, fix the stabilizers. I mean, some people, that's the only reason they want hot swap. Yes, later on they might get some different switches, but at least they can tune the keyboard to where it's gonna sound decent to begin with. So, you know, I personally, I would have included lube switches, even if there were factory lube, because these switches, I mean, they're pingy, and it can be heard without having to put my ear up to the back of it. So this bottom here is creating a, basically an echo chamber for, um, for those unlubricated keys to just go pinginess, pingy crazy. So, um, yeah, I, uh, Honestly, uh, when I reach out to companies and I'm like, hey, I review products on YouTube. If you have anything for me to review or you'd like me to review them, here's my channel. Take a look, you know, and then I usually ask them because they're like, which one do you want to, um, you know, a lot of times they'll ask me which one I pick. But I'm like, well, why don't you pick one for me? Because I prefer that they pick something and hopefully they're picking out, you know, something that's cream of the crop. So, hey, you know. This one's okay, but this one's a little better. Let's send them this one so it'll give them a better impression of our keyboards. So the few times that I get sent keyboards that, you know, are just... They're difficult to find any, you know, value proposition in. Because, I mean, this is... Okay, this is the X, XVX L75. So I'm going to take a look real quick here. And like I said, I, I on new keyboards, I like to do as little... Um, reading on it previously as possible i'll see a couple of pictures maybe read a couple of the bullet i bullet points but i like to i i prefer being um you know kind of surprised you know if there's something new so xvxl 75 first one to come up so on the xvx channel on their site right, they're saying 530 grams but this blue one and it does not come with um this this extra keycap set they're asking $79.99 for this keyboard. And, I mean, they're obviously saying hot swap, hot swappable low pro profile switches. Um, so, I mean, they're using hot swap as one of the selling points. But if you're not going to make it to where it's actually realistic to you know, hot swap them, um, I, I just... I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is, at first glance, this is a it's, a, it's a nice looking keyboard. I like the colors. Blue is probably one of my favorite colors. Um, and this colorway is, is just really nice, um, even with those, the cyan hack sense. But, you know, I look at this, I see aluminum, I see a low profile. I think, ooh, good quality. 
And I honestly, I I guess maybe I had I set my expectations too high for this because I did see the price. I'm like, okay, it's eighty dollars. It's cheaper than a new fee, and it might not be as good as a new fee, but you know, maybe it. You know, we'll start. No, I mean this. <clears throat> I have yet to try an air, but um, I, I, from what I've seen at the Halos, they definitely paid much better attention uh, to the products they put out there. Because, I mean, honestly, if I was a manufacturer, I wouldn't even be selling this. And if I did have this in stock, I mean, $35, $39, that'd be it. Because, I mean, we're talking about aluminum so thin that it literally... Can be bent just by pulling the switch out oh and forget about any of that paint on your plate because that's gonna go away this is just ridiculous i mean seriously what what how are they how are how are people expected to remove these switches if there's nothing to grip onto? You literally have to take it out at an angle and you yeah, see? I bent it. Just taking out the switch, I bent that bar again. And see how easily it just bends back into place. I mean I'm barely putting any pressure on it. That's just I mean honestly. So I guess I'll do a stock sound test, and maybe I'll tune the stabilizers. Maybe I won't. Let's get technical. Today we're taking a look at the XVX L75, a low profile, 84 key, three mode wireless keyboard with a 3000 milliamp hour battery. It comes stock with shine through PBT, low profile keys from XVS, as well as Bluetooth 5. It does include a top aluminum fra frame with a translucent PBT bottom case. It weighs in at 530 grams and MSRPs for $79.99. The chin of this keyboard sits at 16 millimeters off the typing surface, while the back sits at 22 millimeters, providing you with a 5 degree typing angle. Today we took a look at the XVX L75 and 84 key three mode wireless low profile keyboard uh, with an aluminum frame and a PVT translucent bottom. Why translucent bottom? I don't know. There's no downward facing RGB. Um, the battery is right under here. It says that it's a 3000 milliamp hour battery, but it seems pretty small. But I don't know. I, I, I'm not saying that I doubt that. I'm just, I'm really just wondering where the price or the value proposition is supposed to be here since um, I went and looked up my Keychron, which is also 75%, and I paid 69 for it uh, over a year ago. And I mean, granted, yes, it does not have an aluminum frame. I will give you that, but it sounds much better than this. I can take out the switches, no problem. It doesn't scratch up the plate. Um, it's, it's miles better than just how it sounds because I haven't modified that one and stock it sounds way better than this does and it was ten dollars less so i'm really trying to grasp where xvx saw the value proposition here i mean maybe it's marked up so that they can sell it but i don't see this keyboard being worth more than 35 dollars 38 dollars really i mean don't get me wrong, I love their keys, and I love their low-profile keys. I, I will be giving a go of these low profiles on another keyboard and giving them a sound test because I do enjoy them. And I was honestly kind of expecting to like their keyboards, maybe not fawn over them, but not feel like this. I, I feel dirty, to be quite honest with you. I was expecting something better. I mean, usually when a company sends me out their first product to review, they try to send me something, you know, that's, it's nice. Uh, something in their stable that is, is, is a nice representation of their brand. If this represents their brand, I don't know. I mean, I just, all I can do is be honest. I'm not trying to be negative. I just don't see where or how anyone would be happy paying $80 
for this. I mean, it sounds horrible. The build quality is very poor. I, I should not have to bend aluminum to get a switch out and it should not bend in the first place, but it's so cheap. I mean, that's why I was so light. I was like, this, is, it should be heavier. Um, I'm used to, I mean, the two frame or two material frame keyboards, like the Halo, which comes with an aluminum top and an ABS bottom, um, despite them having plastic, they're still quite, quite um, substantial. They weigh a good amount because the aluminum they're using isn't some cheap, I can bend with my fingers aluminum. I literally can bend this aluminum back into place, but I shouldn't have to, but I scratched up the aluminum just trying. I was, like I said, I was going to do a uh, sound test uh, with tuned stabilizers, but I don't think the stabilizers are really gonna help the ping that exists in this keyboard. Uh, yes, because the switch is not being lubed, but You'd figure if you're going to ask that much, you'd at least, you know, put some better switches in there instead of just some Otemus um, or some lubed Otemus, perhaps. I mean, if you're going to go cheap, you can could have added a couple of pennies per switch and you could have gotten them lubed. I know Otemu does offer factory lubing for their switches. So it's 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 like they said, let's let's try to build the cheapest low profile keyboard wireless and let's charge as much as we can for it all right what does a key card go for okay let's sell it for around that maybe a little bit more because we have aluminum they don't well it's 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 just not a um i'm trying to i'm trying to think of one good thing about it it looks nice but i mean even the led light doesn't light up doesn't match up with the hole i turn it on to try to see the the light i mean if i'm looking at it straight on it looks like there's no light on but yeah there is a light look up. oh see see, see? Oh, there it is you got to look at it an angle why because it's not lined up so not only is it you know poor material it's a inconsistent build um I cannot recommend this to anyone. I honestly can't. And I mean, I hope to still be able to try other XVX products, but I mean, if they're like this, I guess I won't be missing out on much. Anyway, I, I, I truly don't know what else to say about this keyboard. I wanted to like it. I'm, I've been using my Keychron a little bit more. I've got no Temu or a an EUSU that uses Otemu that is also low profile that it was I bought that one for I want to say 17 16 or 17 dollars now it has a steel plate but it sounds much better than this stock and I mean it's an EUSU so I just I guess I just expected a little bit more than a, a ultra budget brand but in my opinion this is an ultra budget keyboard on a mid tier price range in a mid-tier price range and I just don't believe that it belongs there and I honestly even if it was cheaper I still probably wouldn't recommend it I'd still say go get the the use even though it's not fully low profile it's it's better than this and I got feet so I can choose my typing angles having no feet on a plastic bottom case you're just basically saying screw you guys I don't care if you want a different typing angle you get the one we give you and that's it because I can understand that in an aluminum kit. I mean, but even then, I've seen aluminum kits with foldable feet. The NJ68, for instance, the NJ68 Pro, it has foldable feet in an aluminum case, but this is a plastic case. They could have easily uh, put some indents in there and had at least one set of feet uh, because typing at this angle is too low. Uh, I'm buying a low profile usually for a, a, a companion for a laptop but I would like to get a little bit more typing angle out of it, not just the low profile. So anyway, I'm gonna leave you guys with the stock sound test of this keyboard, which is not going to impress, I, I don't believe. Um, and until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.